It's early morning, the birds are singing, I have coffee. The plants are coming out of the ground for spring. It just doesn't get any better than this. But I need to back up a couple of months and show you what I've been doing. In episode six, I mentioned that I need to figure out how to generate plants cheaply because I can't keep buying them. And I've seen a lot on this winter sowing, so I wanted to give it a shot, but I don't drink milk. So I asked my neighbor if he had any milk jugs and he gave me one. And then uh, Alex Nichols put a comment out there that said, hey, go to a coffee shop and ask them for some. So I did that. I walked up to a local coffee shop they were not thrilled, but they gave me about half a dozen. So what I'm thinking is I need to do a covert activity at night to go through their trash and dig out additional milk jugs. <laughs> I'm not recommending anybody else do this, but it's what I'm gonna do. I did have some concern the police would be called, but obviously I'm having fun with the theme of Operation Milk Jug. I was able to get an additional 10 milk jugs, and that allowed me to try winter sowing, but I haven't been near as successful as I would have liked. So after watching this video, if you have advice, please let me know what's worked for you or what you've learned from your experiences. This is the area I chose to place my winter sowing jugs. I removed the ground cover and added leaf litter to help keep the jugs upright. So here's just a couple of the milk jugs I've uh, collected and I'm gonna be using a box cutter, scissors, and a drill to prepare these milk jugs for being used in uh, winter sowing. We're going to make a small cut just to get it started, then use a, a scissors, cut around, leaving a little bit as a hinge between the two halves, and there you have it. Need to check the mail again. With these seeds, I'm hoping I'll be able to continue rewilding other people's yards. There's a ton of information out on the web regarding winter sowing. This is my first attempt. These four jugs I established about three weeks ago with butterfly weed and I'll show you the results here shortly. So when I planted these four jugs with seeds, I only put four seeds per jug and about two weeks ago I thought I only had a germination rate of about 25% but since then I've had additional seeds germinate and right now I stand at a 50% germination rate of the 16 seeds that I planted. So let me open this up real quickly for you so you can see the little plants. And this one, there's three that have germinated. I hope you can see that. That's butterfly weed. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add some just potting soil. 
a lot of different opinions on what you should be using. I just use regular potting soil. Then we're going to add water. So once we've added enough water to get it mixed up, we want this mixture, and I've added way too much water. Okay, I've added more potting soil. Let's see if I can get this mixture right. Should have had a bigger bucket. I added uh, a little bit of topsoil to this to get a little finer mixture. I'm going to be planting some small, smaller seeds in here, and so that'll hopefully help. But here's the milk jug. Now just filling it up. One more. So this mixture may be still a little bit too wet. Um, that's okay, it'll drain. And I'm going to plant very much on the top of the soil level because the seeds are so small that I'm going to be planting here next. Seeds come in many sizes and the size determines the depth you plant the seed. So let's start with uh, one of the grasses I've selected here and they say that you should plant a seed only to a depth of twice its width. So I'm going to just use a little pencil to put some holes that I can put the seeds in. Again, not very deep. And then I'm going to uh, pour a couple seeds in my hand. These are big enough I can actually hold them with my fingers and put them in those little holes. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to plant more than I did in the last groups where I've only put a couple in. I'm going to put, uh, I don't know, a dozen in here and then those that, that actually sprout I'll put in pots once they've gotten to a little side that they're kind of crowding each other. The very small seeds I just sprinkled on the top of the dirt and with one watering the seeds gained good contact with the soil. Once the seeds have been planted, the two halves of the milk jugs are taped back together. The top is left open. Yeah, that's an enormous pile of leaves I just got. This fall and winter, I continue to take leaves from the landscapers. I added leaf litter to all the sections of the yard I had previously removed grass or ground cover. I was expecting to use a lot more leaves in the next rewilded section, but a management meeting led to a restriction in the size of the most recent rewilded area. I finally got around to outlining the border for the next section with the metal edging. I actually outlined a couple of borders for the executive producer to choose from. We settled on the less curvy option. I also decided to make a small swale to see if it would make a difference for some plants. You can see it better when the cardboard is laid out. I was going to dig out the grass, but remembered in the winter with lots of leaves available, I could use cardboard and a thick layer of leaves to kill the grass. I 
I dug out the grass at the edge to help prevent grass growing up next to the metal edging. It's important to remember to remove all plastics, including tape, from the cardboard boxes before using it. So I got the cardboard down and I'm going to move some leaves onto the cardboard. The pile of leaves was so big at one point in time, a neighbor stated he could see it on Google Earth. The pile of leaves used on the cardboard had been sitting there for a while and was wet, hot, and had started to decompose. I'm always interested in seeing nature in action. I took out another section of yard and turned it over to Mother Nature. I need to generate more plants to fill in this space, but I also want to provide free plants to those that want to rewild their yard. I'm wire brushing the metal edging and I'm going to spray paint it green just to make it look a little sharper. We have a wedding coming up in a couple months. Life wants it to look as nice as possible. It did mean I did not expand the garden quite as much as I would have liked, and it'll delay me putting in the water feature I was looking at until sometime this summer, but uh, compromise is important. I hope you'll join me in the next rewilding episode as I take on a unique physical challenge with some help from my friends. While I do enjoy physical labor, I am also working on a rewilding educational episode as I think this may be the key to having more people join the rewilding family. Till the next time we're together, enjoy the wildlife around your home and take care.